Welcome to Really Cool Stuff for the Home podcast, sponsored by HomeWorks. And now with today's show on all the ways to improve your home, is your host, Denise Sanchez. Hello, everybody. This is Denise at HomeWorks, Really Cool Stuff for the Home. And you know what? We do a lot of video podcasts and all the luxury appliances that we sell, you know, some unique workstations and uh, we'll be talking about our central vacuums and home automation, but we also offer some services that are quite unique. For instance, cutlery. People don't realize um, how your cutlery, um, it, it needs to be sharpened professionally. You know, just using those little knife sharpening things is not the 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 uh, only way to achieve a result. So I had some, we work with a lot of chefs and I started asking chefs about their knives. You know how they always package their knives like in these um, roll out, you know, kind of canvas things or leather bags. I mean, they tote them around. They're like their tools or specialized tools. And they were telling me about a knife sharpening service that they use. And so we got in touch with this knife sharpening service company and, um, I wanted to go over that with you, how important it is. I'm going to introduce you to Dominique Besson. Is that correct how you say your last name? Okay. So I know you don't know this, Dominique, but I, uh, uh, um, I have some French blood. In fact, my dad was 100% French. His name was Robert Joseph Levesque, L-E-V-E-S-Q-U-E. So my yeah. maiden name, you know, Denise Levesque. So, um, and, and he was 100%. He came in from uh, his family from from France, and then they went to Quebec in Canada, uh-huh. and then he came down, uh, his family, to Boston in Massachusetts. Uh-huh. So, yeah, so we have that in, in common. But tell me a little bit about your company. Before we talk about this service, I want to know a little bit about your company and where this accent comes from. So there's got to be a little bit of background story here, and I want to share that with my audience. Sure. Mm-hmm. Well, as as your father, I'm 100% French. Mm-hmm. I was born in France, born and raised. Mm-hmm. I came in the U.S. I was 27 years old. Wow. Out of a dream. Uh-huh. That was a dream for me. And mm-hmm. yes, I did accomplish that dream. Uh-huh. Uh, came in the U.S. and started as because, you know, not all Frenchmen, but look, I, I was a, I was a cook. I cooked for mm-hmm. over twenty something years, uh-huh. so uh, I knew that I could basically wherever I wanted to be in the world mm-hmm. with cooking, French cooking. I could oh go yes, anywhere. oh much coveted. Right? Yes, oh heck so, yes. Uh-huh. My goal was to be in the U.S., so that's what I did. Mm-hmm. I came to the U.S. I had an opportunity. I was hired by a company out of Los Angeles to come mm-hmm. to uh, work in the U.S., so I did. There mm-hmm. we go. Mm-hmm. So that's that. So I worked for many years in kitchens, but I always had that thought in behind my mind that I, you know it's a it's a young man game. Yeah. You get to a point from a certain age, so, yeah. it's really difficult to keep up. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I, you know, I looked at some other avenues and things. So I've learned, I've learned along the way. After I, I, I left cooking, I learned how to sell. I, I learned how to work with certain companies, and ultimately, I, I've created Star Knife Sharpening mm-hmm. about 14, 14 years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's and, awesome. And yeah. and and you're uh, you you're a little bit different because when you come to our uh, the service that we offer, you come to my store twice a month, yeah. and you bring this big high tech huge van, and you we give you the knives. You don't leave the premise. You do everything in this high tech van that has sure. all these unique um, apparatuses to give you these great sharp edges and there was something on here that i read that um let's see uh you address more than just dull knives you restore every blade by not just sharpening but also reshaping thinning and even serrating as necessary so how do you do that that that's incredible and i know there's some beveling and degrees and and that sort of thing i want you to explain that okay well first let's talk about the van the van Mm -hmm. is because when I decided to create this business, I said, I, I, I either I go big or I stay home. Mm-hmm. So I decided to do it the, the most seriously possible I could. Mm-hmm. So therefore, the, 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 the equipment and the stock, because I do sell nap as well, but mm-hmm. the stock, in, I had to have some, some, some kind of, a, of, of an equipment like this to do that. Mm-hmm. To, and look also to the chef 
because you mentioned the van, you had so many rinky dink out there that would pull out two grinders and on the street exactly, and, yes. and grind knives. And here you go, you have a sharp yeah, knife. Uh-huh. It's not the way I wanted to operate. Mm-hmm. I, I came from after cooking, I went to work for corporate, mm-hmm. with big corporate corporation. So I've learned from that, that if you do something, you do it right. You don't right. do it at all. So mm-hmm. that's why I used to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as the knives themselves, there's a lot, of, you know, different knives, different functions. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, and you find out that there is also different geometry depending on the knife itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, a chef knife, most of the time, I mean, for those that, that work with the German knives, obviously, but also some of the Japanese, mm-hmm. you have some kind of a, of, of a rock, you mm-hmm. know, some kind of a, quite of a slight bow to the knife. Mm-hmm. Why is that? It's about when you cut, you rock with the knife. So mm-hmm. we make it much makes it much, much easier for you to cut mm-hmm, instead mm-hmm. of pounding right. instead of, of fighting with the knife. The yeah. knife is a tool. The tool should, is supposed to you know, facilitate your life, not make it more complicated. Exactly. So, uh-huh. so if you have – so we address the geometry of the knife. We make sure, we make sure the geometry is correct when we sharpen the knife. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, no point of sharpening it. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, most of the knives – uh, are coming into a thicker edge. So what does that mean? That means that if we do a thicker edge, this edge is not going to last for your customers and my mm-hmm. customers. Mm-hmm. They, yes, it is going to be sharp to start with, but mm-hmm. it will dull very quickly. Mm-hmm. So the goal here is not only to provide the sharp edge, but provide a sharp edge which lasts, which for your our customers, for the ours, the you and, 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 and me, mm-hmm. these Basically, our customers, we see them pretty much once a year. Or, you know? or no, I'm seeing people coming in twice a year. They so love having because a they sharp. To it. <laughs> yes, yes, they see the difference. It makes your work so much easier and faster. Exactly. Cutting the tomato or cutting the steak or, you know, anything. It's so much faster. It really exactly. is. <laughs> exactly. That's, so that, that's the balance we, 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 try, we achieve all the time, or we try to achieve all the time, is to mm-hmm. get a knife that is sharp, but mm-hmm. the, uh, the sharpness will last. Mm-hmm. It's easy to give it mm-hmm. back, uh, to, to do a sharp knife, but if the customer comes back two months later because yeah. the knife is dull, yeah. this is a disservice to the customer. Mm-hmm. This mm-hmm. is not fair. Mm-hmm. But if we give, and those who come every, every six months, it's because they're addicted to the, to the sharpness. Right, they exactly. They want all the time. Yeah. So those... We we take care of also, but mm-hmm. it's pretty much pretty much. They're that's usually chef hard. type people, you know, that do a lot right. of cooking. You know, well, that, cook, yeah, every day. Yes, yes, exactly. Every day, uh, we for the the the, the serrated knives basically. Uh, as you use the knife, you wear out the teeth, like you mm-hmm. wear out your knife, your mm-hmm. straight edge knife. Mm-hmm. You, you wear out the edge. On the, on the serrated knife, you do do the same thing. You wear out the, the serration. Mm-hmm. It takes longer because you don't use that, ma- that knife much uh, as often as mm-hmm. you would a regular knife. Mm-hmm. However, they go dull and you lose the teeth. Well, we have a, a magic diamond-coated. It's a diamond-coated wheel, something that we use that will will be able to bring back uh, the bread knife put some teeth back on the bread mm-hmm, knife mm-hmm. so the bread knife can last longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, typically in the past, basically a knife sharpener, when they was the teeth were getting <laughs> worn out, mm-hmm. what they would do is that they would, you know, change that knife into a straight edge. You know, but they didn't know. I didn't have yeah. any equipment to right, do that. Right. For us, as long as we have metal, we'll make a bread knife out of it. We'll right. keep a bread knife uh, uh-huh. running. Basically, is uh-huh. what we do. And, you know, people are now, I think, understanding that um, your cutlery, they are tools, you know, so they're investing in better knives. So this becomes even more important. And like those Japanese knives, I understand that 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 is very, very, um, it's not everyone that can sharpen those type of knives. Is that correct? Correct. And you're kind of, you're certified on this kind of stuff too, right? Star is a recommended knife sharpener for Shun. Mm-hmm. The Sean Cutlery people mm-hmm. recommended us. As a matter of fact, for over two years, we did the we, – because when you buy a Sean knife, you get a, a lifetime free sharpening. But mm-hmm. there is a caveat to it. You have to ship it back to Oregon and wait yeah. another two, three weeks, uh-huh. yada, yada. Yeah. So and for a while, they didn't have a, 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 a good sharpener back in Oregon. So mm-hmm. they contracted us for the Midwest. Mm-hmm. So Star was sharpening basically and repairing all the knives – the shun knives in the Midwest. So we we're getting pretty much two, three, four orders a day of oh. people that need mm-hmm. their knife shopping. Mm-hmm. So we were recommended by Shun for uh-huh. that. But 
So that's the main name, but we are also by Victorinox. Mm -hmm. uh, we are commanded by Wustaf, Henkels. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Wustaf uh, and Victorinox are using the same equipment that we do mm -hmm. as far as sharpening mm -hmm. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, Kikuichi, which is a very big, big, big name in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's a 700, uh, 700 years old company. Mm -hmm. Wow. Set, same family for 700 years. Wow. What a, that's amazing. Wow. Yes. I have Indeed. a question. Yep. So if you bought a really good knife and you really invested in a good knife and you had it sharpened by someone like you, mm -hmm. how long would you expect, you know, a typical, someone that cooks a lot, but maybe not a chef, you know, not a chef type. How long would that knife, do you expect it to last? As far as the sharpness of it, it depends. There's so, <laughs> so many factors into it, but mm -hmm. basically if they take care of the knives. Mm. Uh, a Japanese knife typically, usually, is a fairly thin edge. Mm -hmm. It's a thinner edge than would be a German. Ex example, uh, a German, we will sharpen it at about uh, uh, 17 degrees, but uh, that's pretty much uh, the, the, the thinness we're going to go with it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go uh, thinner because otherwise the, the, the edge becomes fragile. Mm -hmm. a, ja a Japanese, we can go down to 15, 14, 13 mm -hmm. degrees, mm -hmm which make the, the, the knife much thinner. Mm -hmm. And if you maintain that edge, uh, you're good for a good year before before you come mm -hmm. back to me uh, and take mm -hmm. care of it. But Unless the, you do some things that you're not supposed okay, to do. Okay, then how long would that knife last as far as being able the, to be a tool? Of, The lifetime yes, yes, of the yes, knife? Yes, yes, On a good knife, a good knife. Good knives. I mean, you're in for, for 15, 20 years okay. if you take right. care of yeah. it. Oh, yes. Okay. I mean, it's yeah. recommended eventually to change, to 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 renew your curry because uh -huh. uh, curry is like a tool. It's like a cookware mm -hmm. that you sell. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like a, a, even the iron, beautiful a, a washer, dryer and mm -hmm. things like that. Eventually they get, they don't do what they were supposed to do to start mm -hmm. with because they get old. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with a knife. Eventually as the sharpening starts, you, you have, you have a thin edge. And mm -hmm. as you as you as you start to sharpen it, you go more right. Right, that's what I was wondering. Yes, exactly. So you get up in up in a in a, in a blade because a blade is a V mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. So eventually, you just you know treat yourself every twenty years mm -hmm. onto a, a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, uh, two hundred two hundred fifty dollar mm -hmm. beautiful Japanese knife, mm -hmm. and you and you're good You're to a go. business, yeah. yeah. You know, a lot of people have so many knives, and I know that before I used to sharpen my knives with you, that <laughs> I would I would get one knife, try to work with it, get another knife, and and what it was was they weren't sharp enough, and so I was trying yeah. to find something that would cut better, work better, like even yeah. cutting a potato. Uh, that can be uh, very 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 dangerous if your blade yes. is not sharp you would think yeah. the other way that if you had a sharp knife it might be more dangerous no. but but it just makes it goes right through that potato where you're fighting it when you have a dull knife i can't exactly. believe what i used it's to go dangerous. through yes i used it to hate so it and i used to hate carving up like the turkey or <laughs> you know roast i hate it because it was all to do with my knives yes. and it's just amazing and you, there are other things that you do Tell us some unique things that you've sharpened. And I know even through my store, you have oh. seen some unusual things. Oh, oh, I got some unusual stories. Uh, once I sharpened a glass knife. A glass Literally knife. A knife made out of glass. Uh -huh. Somebody asked me to sharpen that. Uh -huh. uh, I, in San Antonio, I did sharpen a, a hundred, uh, 110 years old ceremonial blade uh, mm -hmm. uh, swords that was for the guard of the of the uh, uh, the king of Thailand oh my goodness <laughs> uh, that was a beautiful beautiful thing I bet. Uh, somebody else asked me and had to cut pepper by the way uh, uh. that somebody asked me to sharpen their Japanese katana I had uh. to be so it's and a, that was a god a 30 some inch long blade uh-huh uh and the guy, when I, I sharpened it, I said, the, the thing is ready. The first thing he did was took took a piece of paper and see if he could cut the paper, through paper uh -huh. with it. Wow, that's so, sharp. It is. Yeah. It is sharp. So, yeah, I had, some, I had some odd stuff like this that that's, uh, you wonder. But uh, after all, you know, after that, after that uh, 
you get you get used to the the, the, the unusual kind of deal, right? Yes. And even in my store, you've done, uh, I think, like a Confederate a buck knife type of thing you did, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and and uh, shears, shears. You know, when you're thinking about you know, a good quality shears, um, scissors. We hear that all the time. Uh, seamstress that yeah. wants sharp knives, and that that's really critical. And just the other day, I had a customer come in. They had bought um, a, a a peeling knife from us. Remember the other day, yeah, the Rosalie, right, the Rosalie, right, the Rosalie. Yes. Right, the yep, Rosalie. Yes. Um, and she asked, "Could you could you sharpen this?" And you looked at it and you go, uh, "Yeah, I can do it." And and you did it. I mean, it was amazing the things that you. That could was do. the first, by the way. That oh, was really? the first, really, uh, <laughs> because of the way that, because that was a good tool. That, because Rosalie. Uh, Rosalie Design, I know the company mm. because I, you know, I've been, I've been in the circuit for a right. long time, so mm. I know them. I know Rosalie. Yeah. Rosalie yeah. designed good, high-quality mm. product. Yes. And they, when they designed the peeler, they thought about, I don't think they thought about maybe making it you know, resharpenable, but at mm. least you should be able to replace the blade right. if you want. Right, right. You know, so Rosalie thinks about that stuff yeah. instead of uh, oh. putting a blade like, when, when you yeah. just throw it away. And there, yeah, you have to, German yeah. company. And is it true that the best knives, except the Japanese knives, are made in Solingen, Germany? Is that true? Oh, you have, well, you know, you have to think, you have to go back in history. Mm -hmm. uh, Solingen is because it's known to be uh, the cradle of knife making mm -hmm. in Germany. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Toledo in Spain, mm -hmm. Spain, uh, Toledo is the cradle of knife making in Spain. If mm -hmm. you go to Thiers in France, mm -hmm. this is the cradle of knife making in, in France because all those you know, you know, the 14, 15, or well, maybe even before that, when they needed swords, mm -hmm. they had to have some kind of a complex manufacturing that. Right. Thing. Uh -huh. So, Solingen is is the uh, the cradle for Germany, here for France, Toledo mm -hmm. for for Spain. Uh -huh. So they all all their countries. You know, when you talk about Seki for Japan. Uh -huh. So all of them, all countries have their own place mm -hmm. where. Um, because of the soil, too, most of the time, Thiers is because it's very volcanic. Mm -hmm. So okay. they're, able to, they're able to pull out some, mm -hmm. some minerals and, mm -hmm. and, and things like that to, to make knives. Mm -hmm. So that's why. But Solingen is, is German. And German is the one, the, the one the, because the, the knife took an evolution from, uh, you know, from 70, 80 years ago when all the knives were made out of high carbon. So they were very prone to rust prone mm -hmm. to do to to do all that kind of stuff and right. stain and so on and so forth so the german developed that non i, I want to call it non-stain i don't want to call it stainless because mm -hmm. it's not true it's a non-stain high carbon steel product mm -hmm. alloy actually mm -hmm. and they were the one to to come up with this particular alloy therefore mm -hmm. After that, all, all Europe has been using the same steel to make their knives, mm -hmm. basically, make mm -hmm. some of their stain-free uh, knives. Mm -hmm. But Wustoff and Henkels are really the big, big, big names right. in, the, in the Western world mm -hmm. as far as knife making. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Solingen came, became the mm -hmm. almost the epicenter of, of, of Europe for, mm -hmm. for knife making because yeah. of that. Because I noticed that when I would go in and look at knives, you know, before, and, and I used to sell some knives. We're going to be selling some more. And I want to talk to you about your knife selections, too. I did not know. I did not know. Shame on you that you sold knives. I did yeah. not know that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But I noticed that all the knives I was looking at, they were all made in Solingen, Germany. I said, what's up with this, you know? And what are some of the brands on the Portugal side and the Spanish side? Do you do you call any of those? Uh, I've there is one company in Portugal that used to make some knives. Uh, I used to carry them. Mm -hmm. They went away for a while. They they, they had some importing uh, 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 issues, mm -hmm. so we kind of you know fell. They fell by the wayside. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why the German uh, got stronger and more popular is because of the of the, the their, their powerhouse. So mm -hmm. Gustav and Henkel right. really, really, really uh, came in the US, mm -hmm. came on the market and mm -hmm. sold their product. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Lily Bitty French uh, was the, the Sabatier brand. Mm -hmm. And 
But Wustoff and Henkels are really the two powerhouse that went that came on the mm -hmm. American market, mm -hmm. sold their product, mm -hmm. did well with mm -hmm. it. They had a great quality product to provide to customers. Well priced. Uh, yeah, and mm -hmm. the rest is history, basically. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason yeah. why whenever you look into yeah. a lot of knives, it's all made in Solingen because uh -huh. they have the facilities, they have the know-how, uh -huh. they uh -huh. have everything to make the knife, to uh -huh. make a knife that works a while and, and that is worth the money. So it, it became, by default from the others, if I may say, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the French, the, the Spaniard, the, even the Italians, mm -hmm. or even the Portuguese, by default... Uh, they became the uh, the, the, the big go -to, name. Yeah, the go-to product. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, why would you use a Japanese knife, which they're so different than the German knives? Why is why are their knives so different? Can you explain on that? Yes. Yes. Okay. The Japanese. Okay. So let's start by the beginning. A German knife. I always compare it to be a four by four. I mean, mm -hmm. the German have been concentrating on making a knife that will go through almost everything. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So that's about four by four. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look into the Japanese knife, they're more concentrating. It's more of a Ferrari. It's more of a delicate, mm -hmm. a very reliable, but delicate product. The reason why is that the, the Japanese, their philosophy is completely different. The philosophy of making a knife is when you cut, you should not even bruise the fiber. See, oh. it represents the fibers. And when you cut, you should not be pulling them. They should mm -hmm. be clean mm -hmm. completely clean mm -hmm. because they believe and it's true that you alter the the test of the food uh -huh. if you bruise the fiber mm -hmm. so That's therefore the japanese are making knife much thinner uh -huh. so at you know 12 between 15 and 12 and 15 degrees basically mm -hmm. on the edge so mm -hmm. the thinner the better obviously mm -hmm. uh and and to uh, to stick to that philosophy of if when I when I cut I should not be bruising the fiber. Mm -hmm. So so, are, so you ahead. would want you would want to have both type of knives. Right. So what right. what which what kind of uh, things would you prepare with the Japanese knife over the German type knife? Well, I mean, you know, in the store, as you may know, uh, we opened the store too in in, uh, in in San Antonio not too long ago. So we're doing a lot of that, a lot of helping people to understand that. Mm -hmm. But basically, it is okay. Have a German knife for all mm -hmm. the heavy work. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, splitting a, 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 a watermelon, right? Uh, cut, cut potatoes. A, uh, yes, potato. <laughs> cut the chicken in half. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. Uh, 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 do all the big, you know, the big vegetables, mm -hmm. butternut squash, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, all the right. squashes and everything uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. Use a German mind for that. Uh -huh. For the Japanese, once the thing is broken down uh -huh. and you want more precise cut and easier cut uh -huh. because that's going to go through the products much easier because mm -hmm. the, the V of the blade is much thinner because mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So you, you use your Japanese knife. Or for precise, for or you cut when you cut herbs, when you cut salad, mm -hmm. when you cut things like that. Mm -hmm. Herbs are very fragile, mm -hmm. but if if you cut with a Japanese knife, you're not going to bruise the fiber again. So mm -hmm. you 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 uh, the test of the herbs, the test of the salad, and rice right. things are going to stay uh, a, a bit more whole, a bit yeah. tasty. And I, I can see that because I know when I'm cutting up like cilantro or something that a Correct. knife will crush. The yes. edges, right? Crush it. Where, right. Yes. Okay. Like baseball, same way. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Well, that is very educational. I just learned something big. So you just opened up a store in San Antonio? Yes. We just yeah. opened a store yeah. at the uh, Island uh, Commercial Center on uh, Northwest Military. Okay. All right. So yeah. what type of knives are you selling? Is there a brand name or... Yes, we do. We do sell uh, uh, Sean, Miyabi, mm -hmm. Busta, uh, Hankles. Uh, we sell uh, Victorinox. We mm -hmm. sell. It's it, it's a pretty much an extension of what we had in mm -hmm. the truck, mm -hmm. but on a, big, a little bit on a bigger scale as far mm -hmm. as knife. Kikuchi, mm -hmm. we sell. Mm -hmm. We sell. Uh, we're getting into some. We import uh, a knife directly from Japan mm -hmm. that we're going to bring that down being made right now that we're bringing in. Mm -hmm. We also uh, uh, work with a local artisan. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got a gentleman in Houston making a knife for wow, us that uh -huh. we're going to sell uh -huh. at the... Pro at the I at think the I saw a picture of that that you were showing us. And they're, they're, they're like real artsy, right? They're, um, what does he use for his handles? Is that the one? 
uh, he's going to be using some G10. It's it, it's it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's, it should be finished by now. So uh, uh, we have that. Uh, we we teamed up also with a, a gentleman out of Austin uh-huh. that makes cutting board. Oh wow! Uh huh. And a very thick cutting board made uh-huh. out of out of uh, 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 no dye, no uh-huh. whatsoever, no chemical, no, uh-huh. none whatsoever uh-huh. with it. And he's a small guy that makes that. So we uh-huh. we also try within the store try to support that as well. Try right. to find some people that can do things like yeah. that for us. And I love that you're getting some local. Um, we're in Texas, so it's exactly. kind of cool that you're bringing you know local artisans that you know that right. are in Texas. That's, That's neat. important to us. Yes, you know I have products that. Um, are um, uh, you know made in France, Italy, Germany, but it is nice to be able to offer something <laughs> that's American made, and then especially made in Texas. There you go. <laughs> right? Yes, yes, that's why that's why we try to do yeah. that. We try to support those guys, which is you know it's uh, it's it's you know it's rewarding. We're in Texas. We have to support each other. For, yes, for, exactly. For we sure must. And I really have enjoyed. It. You're a lot of fun when you come in. You're always so happy. And <laughs> my customers can. We do it the first and third Monday of every right. month. Yeah. And you, um, they'll bring me the knives either Friday or Saturday before, and they can come and pick it up that same day. And they love that you don't leave with the knives. You know that you're right there. Yeah. Uh, in, in our parking lot with this big, huge van. So th- that's kind of neat, too, you know. that, uh, And it does help with the uh, – I did not know you were a chef. Man, oh, yeah. that gives yeah, you yeah. some street cred, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I did not yeah, know I did that. It, I did it for over 20 years. And yeah. once in a while, I still have my hitch. You know, it's in my DNA. So yeah. it's, sometimes it does happen uh-huh. when I – I mean, right now it's been so so busy with all the things happening. And, oh, and yes. Because we have a route in Austin, we have a route in. Uh, we have a route in uh, uh, Austin, one in San Antonio uh-huh. and one in Houston. Uh-huh. So I got to supervise all that. Oh, all that yeah. stuff. Very so I haven't busy. had the time, but sometime well, since it's in my DNA, sometime I'm going to get the itch, uh-huh. and it's going to take about three, four months in my in my brain to develop a menu. Uh-huh. And and, and uh, well, okay, I do it. But after that, I got to bring some more. So I call yeah. up the friends and say, "Hey, I did some. I, I, I cooked something. Yeah. Why don't you come and eat it?" Well, listen, you know, I have this chef center, this this Blue Star Chef Center, and I have the uh, the uh, it's it's a it's a company, American company, and yeah. they were only commercial. So they, you, I've got the open burner, I've got the large ovens, I've got the low 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 simmer. I know where you can practice, and I know <laughs> I know we can help you out with all the testing of the food. I know I know we could do that for you. We have to. Get Get you in there. I'm serious. I did not know that. Oh, you're dead. I've got you. You're gonna be... <laughs> I had no idea. I, I all these years that I've known you too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. you know, you, you, when, when I come in, I'm, I'm coming busy. in because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in between two yeah, stops, yes. and you're in because. Sometimes you barely, you know, you pick up the phone and you yeah. have you sign the check at the same time. I, I know, I'm, I you know. know, I'm busy. I know that. I know that. It's, it's isn't it sad? I know. It's so sad. But I'm going to tap into some of your, um, you know, uh, your expertise. I mean, definitely. I, I'm, I'm totally impressed. I'm much more, even more impressed with you now. <laughs> and I, enough. To, I, I just, I'm so glad that we can offer this service. This is again a homeworks, really cool stuff for the home. We don't just offer products. You know, we service everything we sell. We warranty everything we sell. We install everything we sell, whether it's a central vacuum, a home automation, an appliance. But a a need service that we offer is your um, sharpening skills. You know, and it's it's um, your company is called uh, Sharp. Let me make sure I got it right. Star Star Sharpening. Star Sharpening. And you even have a website. Yes. And that is shopping.com is for the, the mobile service, more of the whole right, piece, right, the hotel service and everything, right. And uh, we have for the store is a star chef, 
uh, store.com. Okay. And, and you can visit us there too if you like. Right. And I really appreciate, what a surprise, all the things I learned. <laughs> and I always learn about knives. And that's very interesting. I'm going to invest in a Japanese knife now, you know, because I do a lot of Japanese cooking. Now, I am half French, but my husband is half Japanese. So you can imagine well, you the type of foods that we prepare. And now, we don't want to think about something, Denise. Yes. Okay. The Japanese, the Japanese cutlery didn't start to be what you know uh, as right now, as as the uh, the the shan or or, mm -hmm. or some of the other or the mm -hmm. miyabis and stuff. The Japanese cutlery was a single bevel knife. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. that was like a sushi knife, basically. Right. And the Japanese, when they when they saw that there was some some kind of a, 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 a good evolution to take mm -hmm. by doing this type of knives, mm -hmm. they inspired themselves. Mm -hmm. More from the French cutlery, really, making, uh -huh. than the German cutlery. Uh -huh. That's interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. the French, mm -hmm. the French cutlery, the French knives are, are mm -hmm. a little bit different uh, on on the making. There's less mm -hmm. bolster than mm -hmm. you would have. You know, remember when you had some cutlery on the start at uh, at one point, mm -hmm. the the bolster that you had. Mm -hmm. the, the the French were much smaller. Mm -hmm. The thin, uh, the the profile of the knife. Is much toward the tip. It's much thinner. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more thinner, thinner blades. Mm -hmm. That would be the German and mm -hmm. the Japanese. You know, inspired themselves a little bit of the Fr the way the French were making their mm -hmm. knives. That's compared interesting. To what the, Ger the Germans were. Yeah. So, so they did. Come, yeah. So they evolved too. They and yeah. look look at how people are starting to buy. I mean, we have uh, Japanese knives all the time that you come and you you sharpen. You know, it yes. used to be you didn't see too much of that, but now that's pretty common. And now I understand why. I don't want to be crushing my cilantro. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. We don't want it to be turning brown. I know. We exactly. <laughs> well, at Homeworks, we do offer products and services to make your homework better for you. Again, you can go to star sharpening, StarKnifeSharpening.com to right. see some of his offerings or you can go to homeworkssa.com or stop by our store and this is the first and third Monday of every month um, Homeworks will make your homeworks better for you and Dominique thank you so much you. for you. being you. my guest host you did a great job and I learned something and I know my audience is going to learn a lot Fantastic. about knives thank you so much thank you